Hey guys, Shiloh Colt here with the A to Z Readathon slash June wrap up. Quick recap the A to Z Readathon was one book for each letter of the alphabet. I'm going to start off with finishing with my final two books that I ended up reading for that. First one, Given to the Sea by Mindy McGinnis. In this book, you have the chosen whose sole purpose in life is to sacrifice themselves in the ocean to appease it, which will save the island that they live on. This is told from four points of views. You have Kosa, who is the chosen, Vincent, who is the son of the king, Wit, who was an opposing force, and then you have, well actually I guess you have five point of views because you have twins, Dara and Daniil, who are the last of their race, which is the the Indiri people who are from the earth and have special powers. Now when we see this, Kosa has escaped a massacre of her people. She's the last of her line and she has gone to the kingdom where you have Vincent and Daniil and Dara who were raised up next to him in a sibling-like manner. So you have all of them now in one place. It seemed like it would be interesting because you're getting a lot of point of views and you're seeing what's going on with them. I didn't really enjoy it. I felt like Kosa was very Mary Sue. Not only was she petite and blonde and everybody wanted her, she had literally a magical vagina. And I say that because so much of this book was focused on her, her producing another chosen, her not wanting to pick someone, her being forced, or them talking about forcing her. There were attempts at that, which made me uncomfortable. And then everybody seemed to want her and it was so irritating because there was no real substance behind her it was like we already know that she's a chosen one give somebody else a chance then you had dara who was her antithesis it was almost like light to dark and dara was cool in a lot of ways she was strong she was powerful she was a warrior but she was also very shrewish she had a sharp tongue and she was very almost bitter maybe about her circumstances you had Donald, who I felt I don't didn't really get to have his own thing. He almost played off his sister a lot, and his certain powers that he had made him a little bit sleazy. In the end, I was just underwhelmed by this book, and I was disappointed. I will be doing a discussion about it. If, if you liked it or didn't like it, I would be very curious to see your point of views on it, because I would love to chat about it. My next book that rounded this out was Saga, Volume 1, by Brian K. Vaughn. This is a graphic novel, and it was amazing. It's basically a space opera. You have two warring alien races. One from each ends up falling in love with each other and having a child, and they are running basically from both sides who are trying to capture the baby and kill them. So it was very interesting. You have the warrior who has laid down his sword and swore he would not kill again because he'd seen too much of it in the war. And then you have his female counterpart who will do whatever is necessary to keep the child and her new family safe. And as they flee, they're having all sorts of adventures and you're introduced to all sorts of different creatures and planets. It's super exciting and I cannot wait to read another one. Now that was my Final book for the A to Z, and we're moving into my June wrap-up. I read Every Heart's a Doorway by Shannon McGuire. Very interesting take where children who have gone to other worlds and come back are coping with their new reality and the fact that they may never go to the places where they felt they belonged. This was very interesting because you have a diverse group of characters in both race, sexual orientation, and just where they came from. It was literally all different walks of life, and they all went to different worlds, so you get to explore a lot of different things with that. Along with the different worlds and the different personalities, there is a mystery that is happening at this house that is unraveling. I really enjoyed it. That was a 5 out of 5 star read for me. I also read Poison Eaters by Holly Black, which is a perfect introduction to her if you haven't read her. It's a bunch of short stories that are based in many of the worlds that she has created. I really enjoyed this. They were always just enough, and they really highlight her ability to mix darkness with common issues in fantasy. That's what I think of when I think of Holly Black. That was a 5 out of 5 for me as well. And then I hop back into the world of J.R. Ward, 
who I used to be a huge fan of and then I just got lost in the series and I never took the time to catch back up. So you will be seeing a lot more of her books coming as I play catch up. I read Love Revenged, which I loved. It was the story of Reverend, aka Rev, who has two sides to him. He's definitely devoted to his family, but then he also runs a club and sells drugs and that's how he makes his money. You come to find out that he's got a lot more going on. One of the things I loved about this book was how much it showed her world. She put so much thought into this. We go into a whole other colony of a whole other race because Rev is actually part sympath. And we get more information on that. I loved his counterpart, which was Elena. She was a nurse and taking care of her father who had a mental illness that was extremely difficult to deal with, but she was very loyal to him. And I loved her growth through this book. She really turned into a strong force. And I think that she had forgotten with everything that had happened with her family losing their fortune and her having to work so hard and take care of her father that she had her own needs and seeing her fulfill them and grow was incredibly joyful for me. Then I also read Lover Enshrined, just not my favorite. Um, Fury in general, I think I was kind of over his struggle. Being the twin that was not taken and having a better life he really devoted himself to getting his twin back and I think he lost so much of himself in taking care of him that when he settled and found his mate, he was just lost and he never took the time to try to figure things out. He just kept digging a deeper and deeper hole. So I guess I was over that and we spent so much of this particular story with him battling his demons and him battling his addiction and I felt like we had seen that already throughout the series. Um, I did like Cormia. I almost felt like she got a raw deal. She came from the Chosen, who was a special group that were bred to serve the Brotherhood, um, sort of as blood donors and literally baby creators. Um, she was in for a culture shock. She was taken from one universe to the present, so she had a lot to deal with and Fury was really out in the wind. So. This was a hard one for me and it came together in the end but so much of the book was the struggle with very little of it being the total resolve that it felt imbalanced. The last thing I actually read was Maggie Steve Otter's The Raven Boys, The Raven Cycle 1. I've heard nothing but good things about this and some really good friends were telling me I needed to read it so I went ahead and did it and I'm conflicted. It starts off very slow and I understand why I haven't read the whole thing because there's so much world building that has to be done. Even right now trying to just describe what it was about is difficult without spending a whole bunch of time on it. Uh, you basically have boys who are on a mission to find a Welsh king if you find his resting spot and you awaken him, he will grant you a favor. Turns out that what they're looking for is on ley lines, which are lines of energy that attract sort of the supernatural and things like that. You also have a girl named Blue who is a daughter of psychic and that runs in her family, but she herself is not psychic. She's actually like a battery. She enhances everyone else's powers. So she's always wanted to see what they have seen. And that sort of comes into play with her growing up and sort of defying her mother who is keeping a lot of secrets from her. There's a lot of mystery in this. It's like a, a puzzle and you're getting one piece at a time and they're sort of coming together. Some of it you see and some of it you don't. Some of it's a shock when it's revealed. I really liked it after it picked up, but the slowness is what has me torn. I mean, it took a good 150 pages before it really started to get going. And then when it was really, really good, the book ended. I don't know. I'm, I'm really torn on it. I, I like the world that was built. I thought the concept was really interesting. It was almost like a scavenger hunt, but a paranormal one. So I'm still torn. If you have read this book, what did you think? What did you think about the second book? Did the pace continue to be faster than it was? Was the first book really more about setting the foundation for what was going to happen? 
or is it another thing where it starts off slow and then builds up? I'm very curious. I'd love to hear your thoughts on this. Next, I have a little portion that I'm just going to call Indie Reads because I actually did some net galley reading and I read something that I really enjoyed. It was called The Long Con Geek Naturally by Cecilia Tan. And if you are always wanting books about geek girls and conventions and girls who play video games and read comic books and things like that. This was the perfect thing for you. It's about four different girls who have four different situations going on. One is an author who is attending her first big con. Um, another girl is she's like a video game programmer and she is starting to see someone who runs his own comic book shop. Then you have another girl who's getting over a divorce. And then you have another girl who's trying to figure out what her next move is going to be for her career. And they're all sort of getting together at this con and they all have their own things going on. I liked each of them. They were all distinct personalities. It's a very diverse cast, which I loved. I mean, you have all walks of life going on, all shapes and sizes, all sexual orientations. I devoured it. And if you go on NetGalley right now, it's actually one you can read right now. So I highly suggest that you go and pick it up and give a new author a try. So that will conclude what I've read thus far for the month of June. Because I had so many with the A to Z readathon, I'm not going to recap it. But I will do links below. So you can check that out and sort of get caught up if you'd like. I may squeeze in a couple other ones this month, but I'm not sure. So I'm just going to include them in July. So thanks for hanging out with me. I hope you enjoyed the A to Z readathon. If you did it yourself, I'd love to hear what you were reading. If you've read any of these books, I'd love to hear your thoughts and opinions on them. Thanks for joining me and I'll see you next time, guys. Bye.